I thought maybe it's a good idea to share this with you. Uh, we're gonna rep repair an Audiolab CD player. The, what is it? 8200 CD Q. It's got a preamp in it. Uh, and it's got a d duck in it. Uh, I removed already these screws. And what's wrong with it? It has these capacitors, I don't know if you can, yeah, they're swollen, they have a round top and they get warm also, so I need to re replace them. Uh, it's a John Westlake design and it's got John Westlake written all over it. And they use the Sabre duck and some very low noise supplies, but the main, the main power supply is... Uh, um, it's starting to leak. I think the previous owner of this CD player put something on top of here and then the capacitors got hot. So, um, what we basically have to do is remove the whole PCB and that's going to be a lot of work. I'll show you in, uh, in parts of this video, in this tutorial, how to uh, remove this PCB and more important, how to place it back. Um, to check the basic function as the power supply you check the fuse that one's working that one's gone and that one's also gone sorry for the so I think you have to replace them by 1.6 amp and in the next shot I will get back to that so yeah apparently I put the fuses in for testing those were two and a half amp time delayed each but I wrote down 1.6 amps time delayed times two so that's the proper proper value I start with uh, removing this bridge because later on we have to lift out the whole PCB like this uh, because all the connectors in the back are placed through the chassis the frame and the steel frame is, is almost one piece so we have to unscrew those later and uh, what you need is this Find pitch Torx drivers to uh, unscrew this one. So, first is bridge. So, nice shielded AC cables from the power supply towards the transformer uh, through this cable trunk. You have to remove uh, tie ribs, tie wraps to release the cables, and then you can. Remove the cable trunk and move these cables aside. Then you have to remove this power cable, clip this tie wrap, and there's another power connector here. So as you can see, there's two uh, wire harnesses going in there, and then we can remove this. Then we can remove this whole wire harness assembly. We need to remove the, the ground earth lead from the chassis, and I'm going to decide to cut this tie wrap also because it's impossible to move these double harness wires uh, between the capacitors and the, and the frame. frame. But as you can see now the whole PCB is, is free and now we can start working on these ZIF connectors here and here here and another connector here to completely uh, Re remove all the cables from the PCB in order to uh, remove it from the metal frame. Okay, this one and this one pretty straightforward. You just pull them out as well as these two plugs here. But pay attention, this one is a real ZIF connector. You have to lift this black, black bar here in order to release the, the flat cable. And this one in the corner is a bit tricky. Uh, I used the leverage of my screwdriver to lift it like this, bit by bit, and then got it out. So needs a little bit more attention. The wires are pretty short here. So now I flipped the the player, and we're looking at the back side, and we have to remove all these screws 
in order to uh, release the connectors who are directly soldered onto the PCB uh, to release them from the chassis, from the frame and then we can start lifting at the PCB this is also going to be interesting now this one gives me a little headache I'm going to use my uh, electrical drill with a low torque setting to see if I can shock out the uh, the screw because what you don't want is that it uh, starts spinning freely because uh, then we have a lot more work to do Sorry, I have to film this with one hand but the first shot was right so now it's getting out nicely so what I've hoped was to remove the PCB out of the frame um, but there's a little setback as usual this little capacitor here um, prevents the PCB from, from going up cannot lift it up so what I should do is then remove the whole front cover and see what that brings us so to me we are getting into a phase where it's going to be all or nothing since the power supply is not working at all remove these um, we go all in they use different size of screws for the front panel as you can see so I'm gonna mark where the smaller screws got out um, it appears to be only one screw so that's it asks for extra attention extra care when you put the screws back because probably there's something behind it that you don't want to destroy while putting the screws back in this is what I have until now I prefer to use a ziplock bag for uh, keeping the screws what I've done is I removed the front only just a little bit to create enough space for these capacitors and now I should be able to lift the PCB out of the housing give or take see now the real work can start of this movie I said this has John Westlake written all over it and I can show you a few details you can see here that I think this is the Sabre, Sabre duck is completely surrounded or embedded nested in uh, decoupling capacitors you can see here that the clock is discrete it's not some sort of chip but it's a discrete clock he probably designed him by himself and also completely embedded isolated from the rest of the board with uh, good quality, high quality capacitors. And these are all voltage regulators um, or current sources. This, this I cannot see very quickly. But what you can see here, for instance, he uses a no. I hope you can read it. A normal uh, 7805 regulator, because we all agree those things are shit, but they are very handy for the task. And then behind that. He uses an op amp and probably transistor somewhere to create an extremely low noise power supply. Uh, this thing is only for pre-regulation. So all the discussions about what regulators you use in audio is not interesting because it, it is important what you use afterwards. Um, yeah, this is what I could see so quickly. Um, but you can see pretty every section has its own respective power supply it's a beautiful built PCB, beautiful built board um, if you want to learn something about lay layouting then uh, see if you can uh, reverse engineer or take lessons from uh, what Mr. Westlake designs so what we have here is uh, two, two sorts of caps, 16 volts 6k8 micro and 7k4 no 4k7 that's my dyslexia 25 volts I'm gonna replace them all you can see they are pretty swollen and nasty that's to removed testing it here um, it does not give a short but it runs 20 milliamps at 15 volts and it's lukewarm 
Hmm. See if that was the trick, I don't know. So removed the first uh, batch of capacitors, the first row, I marked them, they're all 6 uh, 6.8k and 16 volts and I also marked the polarity on the other side of the board the polarity is clearly marked but better be safe this one is the 25 volts model um, it was drawing immediately amps and it's running warm yeah this is definitely warm and if I put the voltage up 100 milliamps and maybe it's recovering but if you switch on your power supply and your capacitor behaves like that so that's all capacitors removed Marked the pol polarity. It's probably a symmetric power supply because the, uh, the negative terminals are together and it's mirrored. So, next step put the new capacitors in. So, I put in the, the new BC uh, Viché caps. Um, it's quite easy, nothing special here. I'm gonna clean this later. One thing on uh, soldering uh, caps, and what I always do is I cut the wire really at an angle to make it sharp. Sorry, guys, I have to film with one hand. I hope you can see this. It's sharp, and then it, when you press it through the hot tin, um, it finds its way better through the through the metalized PCB hole. So the caps caps are all there, and with what did I replace them? I can give you these numbers. This is a Fresnel 1973487, nine, and the other one is a Mauser. Mouser. They are always fed, but uh, it's uh, yeah, five nine four uh -huh. mel two two five zero five six four seven two e three. So what I also did was uh, checking, sorry, checking whether these diodes, these uh, standard S two diodes, they form a rectifier bridges if they're all working. I uh, did this with, of course, with the diode tester and uh, visual inspection uh, to see uh, if there was maybe a problem that caused uh, <clears throat> maybe a high ripple on the on the DC to destroy the uh, ca these capacitors, but they seem all to be okay. So next up is uh, testing some voltages and some uh, some currents. So what I will do now is uh, um, apply temporary fuses. 2 amps fast blow and shunt 1.75 ohms resistor uh, for, to prevent some inrush current and measuring uh, using them as a shunt to measure some current running uh, through the through these fuses to see if the uh, if the power supply is balanced um, I don't know the schematic maybe this power supply also runs through one of these fuses but the difference should not be too much between the two lines, the, the positive and the negative line of this power supply. So I'm just going to solder them in as a temporary solution. So I placed the PCB back in the, in the housing and I hooked up two multimeters over the shunts. It's a bit messy here. Uh, but there's uh, a fuse and in series with the fuse uh, 1.75 ohm shunt. And what I'm doing is, uh, with this multimeter, I measure constantly, constant voltage over the shunt. And this one I trigger to capture the maybe the peak voltage. This is live. I did not prepare this. So we'll see what's going to happen. 
It's going to be a bit tricky because I have to start triggering this one and then push the power button. Um, okay. No clue what's happening here. Um, I'm going to measure now a little bit. Seems there is a constant current running. It's not equally distributed. But both in the same direction. Okay. So for better measurements, I removed the PCB from its housing. But I kept the power connector on. I put it on a ceramic tile, so no accidental shortages are being made with the frame or the chassis. And I soldered on the common ground because these are these two are the same. A wire and on one of the doesn't matter which one capacitor positive terminals and let them to my multimeter again this is live I did not prepare I put in uh, regular glass fuses there a uh, little bit overrated this should be 1.6 but they're two and a half but fast acting again they will blow um so let's put on the power and see what happens here So that's 33 volts and these capacitors were rated at 25 volts now. I have them here. Yeah. So this is strange. Something's wrong here. Wrong assumption here. This is not a common ground. So. I really got the voltage over the capacitor here now. Again, I did not prepare this, so that's the beauty of live testing. Let's put on the power. There you go. So I was measuring the two rails, and this is beautifully at 16.6 volts. Uh, which is sufficient for these capacitors. And again, the other rail. Like that. And the final rail. Okay, well within spec of these capacitors. So, no reason for them to start cooking although I don't have the schematics I don't know what the proper voltage should be but we'll do a burn-in test after this so I put the PCB back in I put the front back in you have to take special care of this drawer it's a bit recessed and if you reapply these screws here then make sure this is this fits nicely. I had to adjust and adjust it a little like this to get it uh, over the drawer. And uh, what else? Uh, insulation for the fuse. There's another two. I put them back on later. Power connectors. A temporarily ground lead. So a few screws to fix things. Put the uh, these band cables flat cables back, they're particularly not zero insert force, they're not ZIF to use a lot of force and you have to be careful that you don't squeeze the uh, the cable here it went a little bit wrong I don't know if you can see it so better to use a flat plier and push it in and this one's put back on so we are going to boot the machine again this is live I did not prepare so I put the power plug back in okay and then let's see if we have a flash on the fuses put this one a little bit out sorry put this cable out it 
it's telling us something. LED. I'm gonna pause it for now. The CD was spinning, it says no disc. Let's see if the drawer opens. Yep, that one works. Okay. Let's see if these guys get warm. Nope. Okay. I think we'll find. I think we'll end this video here because uh, reassembling the S SC uh, should not be too interesting. And if we, every, anything new comes up, then I'll keep you guys informed. Um, so thank you for watching. Bear with me. It was my first video. Uh, I'm not doing all the fancy editing tools. I don't have time for that. I just put it together for sharing knowledge. All right. Bye, guys.